Hello students, today we're going to talk about angles and polygons. In your book this is chapter 3, section 5. So at the end of this lesson you should be able to determine the amount of degrees in any convex regular polygon. So let's go over a quick definition which is regular polygon. Now a regular polygon is a polygon that is equiangular and equilateral. And that's called a regular polygon. For example, a regular hexagon would be an example of that. The word regular right in front of the polygon name tells us that all the sides and angles are the same. Now polygon, we should note, means many, poly for many, and gon means sides. So let's go over a couple things before we start. I mentioned the word convex, so there's a difference between convex and concave. This hopefully, these examples that we go over today, hopefully will help. Convex, we'll skip for now. Concave sounds, mentions the word cave. Now I like to look at a cave as, well, you know, a mountain with a hole in it. But what we're going to actually do is we're going to look at, say, problem number six. Now problem number six, it's kind of a stretch, but it could kind of simulate our cave. Now what I notice about this cave is that if I were to turn it upside down, for example, or if I were to turn it in any direction I want, would I be able to pour water into it, and will it hold it? So concave, we tend to think of as a shape that kind of goes inwards that would hold water if we poured water into it. So what we're going to do is we're going to go through the process and see which ones are convex and concave. So I'm going to pull from our toolbox the words convex or concave. So again, concave can hold water, convex cannot, which is what we're really going to be dealing with in geometry. So we have the word convex. So we're going to look at problem number one. In this instance, if I were to pour water on this rectangle, would it be able to hold it? And the answer would be no. So we'll try another one. We have convex again. Now, let's take a look at question number two. Number two, we have this star. Now in this star, if I poured water and say turned it this way a little bit, if I were to pour water right on top, right here, it would be able to hold it. Therefore, it's not convex. It's actually concave. But number three is convex. So we mentioned number two is concave. Number four. Let's, again, we should be able to rotate the shape in any direction we want and still have it not hold water. So if we were to take number four, rotate it a tad bit, and poured water right on top, it would actually hold it in that little, in science, they'd probably call it a meniscus. So we're not going to call that convex. But number five is, let's see, number six, also not convex. Number seven is convex. And so six was concave, and so was number eight. So if you don't see why we call number eight concave, it's because if we took, again, that shape and rotated it, it would be able to hold water from this angle. And four, you saw me move over there. It's concave because it'll hold water in the corner. Because cool. of we're going to deal with so many shapes, we're going to need to know the number of angles that are in there. So what we're going to try and do is help you develop a way or a method or a generalization for solving these. So I filled out a few of these for you. That says, in this triangle, there are three sides. And the triangles that are formed in here are one, because I can only make one triangle from here. The sum of the interior angles of a triangle are 180 degrees. So that should kind of give you an idea of what we're doing already. In a square, theoretically, I can have two triangles. So number of sides, there are four, obviously. The number of triangles that are in there are actually two. Because what we can do is we can connect this corner, okay, and make two triangles. Now, the sum of the interior angles of this rectangle is 360 degrees. Now, if you think about it, 
If one triangle is 180 degrees, then two triangles will be double that. So we're going to base a lot of our things off of triangles to help us out. So for a pentagon, there are five sides. And there are, well, I don't know how many triangles. Let's figure it out. Now the way we figure out the number of triangles is we take one vertice, one area, one point, and we draw a line from that point to each other endpoint. So here's my line that I'm moving. If I moved it to this bottom left corner, well, it already made a line. If I move it to the middle or top, it already makes a line. So I'm going to draw it to the opposite side. So there's one line and two line. You should hopefully be able to count three triangles, counting one, two, and three. So that would be five sides, three triangles. So just think, if the number of triangles we have here are three, then what would the number of, what would the sum of the interior angles be? So that's just going to be three times 180, three times 180, and that would be what? Five hundred forty degrees. So see if you can start to see a pattern as we go through the rest of this. Here we have a one, two, three, four, five, six. So a hexagon. We're going to say that this has six sides. It has four triangles. So let's illustrate the four triangles. I'm going to decide to pick this left hand side point. So there's one, two, three lines, and one, two, three, four triangles. The four triangles gives us 720, um, a sum of interior angles of 720. And notice they got that because it was four times 180. So try again, as we keep, as we continue to do this last one, Think about how the number of sides relates to the number of triangles and how the number of triangles relates to the sum of the interior angles. So for this one we have a octagon, so eight sides. And for the number of triangles we have one, or we have, let's draw our lines first. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six triangles. So are you noticing a pattern? Three sides, one triangle. Four sides, two triangles. Five sides, three triangles. Six sides, four triangles. Eight sides, six triangles. That would actually give us a grand total of 1,080 degrees, which again is just 6 times 180. So hopefully by now you should have sensed the pattern. If we have a some random polygon whose number of sides we don't know, how would we figure out the number of triangles? Hopefully you figured out that it would be n minus 2. And the way we'd figure out the number of interior angles would be to take n minus 2 and multiply by 180. This is a very, very, very powerful equation, which is why we took the time to break it down in terms of this table. Oftentimes, it will just be, you will just be given an equation and told, here's how you figure it out. But I wanted you all to notice that everything in math can usually be broken down in terms of a triangle, like we did here. So 